Level 0. When most people see a dust devil for the first time, the reaction is usually the same. Whoa, a baby tornado. And honestly, it's an easy mistake. They've got the funnel shape, they kick up debris, and they look like a tornado's little cousin. But here's the truth. Dust devils aren't tornadoes at all. Instead of storm clouds and violent weather, dust devils thrive on calm, sunny days. The ground gets scorched by the sun, heating the air directly above it. That hot air rises quickly, and if the conditions are just right, it starts to spin. Add a little surface breeze, and suddenly you've got a visible column swirling skyward. What you're really seeing isn't a cloud funnel, it's dirt, leaves, or whatever loose debris gets caught up in the rotation. Most of the time, dust devils are harmless. They dance across baseball diamonds, empty parking lots, or playgrounds, tossing a few hats and scattering some papers while kids run after them for fun. But don't let the playful image fool you. Some dust devils grow surprisingly strong. Videos show them toppling trash bins, flipping trampolines, even tossing pieces of roofing into the air. In fact, in parts of the American Southwest and Australia, stronger dust devils are notorious for damaging sheds, light structures, and sometimes even knocking people off their feet. What makes them so interesting is how different they are from tornadoes. Tornadoes are born from thunderstorms, stretching down from massive storm clouds. Dust devils, they're strictly ground-based, powered by sunshine and rising heat. No thunder, no lightning, no dark skies, just pure thermal energy twisting itself into something visible. Think of them as nature's test run, a playful preview of what spinning air can do. But once you swap sunny skies for the churning chaos of a thunderstorm, that innocent world doesn't stay harmless anymore. It becomes something darker, wilder, and far more destructive. Level 1. If dust devils are nature's harmless prank, then gustnadoes are its rude little outburst, short, chaotic, and gone before you even know what hit you. A gustnado forms along the gust front of a thunderstorm. Picture it like this. A storm pushes out a rush of cool, heavy air that slams into the warm air near the ground. Where they collide, the atmosphere gets messy. Tiny whirlwinds pop up, spinning just long enough to fling dust, dirt, or branches into the air. The strange part? Unlike real tornadoes, gustnadoes don't connect to the cloud base above. They're grounded troublemakers, spinning only at the surface, which makes them confusing even for trained spotters. They're usually small, but don't underestimate them. Most gustnadoes last only a few minutes and register on the weaker end of the damage scale, but they can still make their presence known. We're talking fences knocked down, shingles peeled off rooftops, even cars and trucks pelted with debris if you're unlucky enough to be in their path. Videos from storm chasers show them whipping across highways, tossing up dirt in sudden bursts that vanish almost as quickly as they appeared. Where things get really interesting is during derechos, those massive, fast-moving windstorms that can stretch across several states. Derechos are famous for spawning swarms of gustnadoes along their leading edge. Imagine dozens of little funnels flaring up in a row, like nature playing its own chaotic version of whack-a-mole. One 1998 derecho across the Midwest produced gustnado after gustnado, leaving people bewildered because they didn't look like tornadoes, but still left damage behind. And that's the key with gustnadoes. They blur the line. Too weak to be classified as true tornadoes, too strong to just ignore. They sit in that middle ground of atmospheric chaos, reminding us that even the edges of a storm can pack a dangerous punch. So if you thought dust devils spinning around a parking lot were wild, gustnadoes are the next step up short-lived, messy, and just destructive enough to make you rethink standing too close to a storm's gust front. But gustnadoes are only the appetizer. Because when these spirals form over open water, they create some of the most mesmerizing and at times deadly funnels you'll ever see. Level 2 If tornadoes are land-based legends, then water spouts are their mysterious ocean cousins, elegant, mesmerizing, and at times terrifying. They're the kind of funnel you might see on vacation stretching from the clouds all the way down to the sea, looking like something out of a fantasy movie. But don't be fooled, not all water spouts are harmless. There are actually two very different kinds of water spouts. The first is called a fair weather water spout. These are the ones that go viral in breathtaking photos, thin white spirals hovering over turquoise water, almost artistic in the way they form. They don't come from supercell storms. Instead, they pop up in relatively calm conditions, often in tropical climates where the air above warm water gets unstable. They tend to be weak, short-lived, and more photogenic than dangerous. 
Sailors in the Florida Keys or the Mediterranean have seen them spiraling in the distance and often just steer clear, snapping a few pictures while the funnel harmlessly fizzles out. But then there's the tornadic water spout, and this one is no sightseeing attraction. Tornadic water spouts form from powerful thunderstorms, just like their land-based relatives. The only difference is that their funnel happens to touch down over water first. And when they come ashore, they instantly become full-fledged tornadoes, capable of tearing apart homes, uprooting trees, and tossing debris for miles. Florida is practically the global capital of water spouts. The warm waters and frequent thunderstorms along the coast make it the perfect breeding ground. In fact, some years, hundreds of water spouts are reported off Florida alone, but they are not limited to tropical seas the Great Lakes have their share too. One of the most famous outbreaks happened in 1969 over Lake Pontchartrain in Louisiana, where dozens of water spouts spun across the surface in a single day. For fishermen and boaters caught in their path, it was a nightmare what looked like ghostly towers from afar turned into violent spirals of wind and spray up close. Even small tornadic water spouts can pack a punch. Imagine being on a boat, watching a dark column racing across the water toward you. There's no sturdy basement to hide in, no walls to shield you, just open water and a hope you're not in its path. For coastal towns, a water spout coming ashore can mean roofs ripped away, windows shattered, and entire neighborhoods suddenly under siege. That's the unsettling duality of water spouts, half tourist attraction, half atmospheric weapon. They remind us that nature can be beautiful and terrifying at the same time. And here's the kicker. Water spouts have a land-based twin. They don't come from monster storms, and they often strike when nobody expects them. But make no mistake, these funnels are real tornadoes. Level 3. If water spouts are the ocean's version of a tornado, then land spouts are their dry ground counterpart, lean, wiry funnels that look deceptively small but count as the real deal. And unlike dust devils or gusnados, these are actual tornadoes. They just form in a very different way. Most people think tornadoes are always tied to massive, rotating supercells. That's true for the monsters we'll get to later, but land spouts skip that entire process. Instead of forming from a mesocyclone high in the storm, land spouts develop when a growing thunderstorm stretches a tiny spin of air already sitting near the ground. It's like pulling a piece of taffy as it stretches. It thins and twists faster, and suddenly that small rotation turns into a visible funnel. Visually, land spouts stand out. They don't have the massive, dark bases of supercell tornadoes. Instead, they appear as thin, rope-like funnels that often connect to clouds that don't even look threatening. Imagine looking up at a sunny afternoon sky with some puffy, cumulus clouds and then noticing a narrow funnel suddenly twisting down to the ground. That's the unnerving surprise of landspouts. They don't always look like they belong to the storm above them. Most landspouts are weak EF0s or EF1s on the enhanced Fujita scale. They might rip off shingles, flip trampolines, or send patio furniture tumbling across the street. But don't let their slim shape fool you. Some have hit EF2 strength, which means winds over 110 miles per hour, powerful enough to rip roofs off homes or roll vehicles. The American Great Plains, especially Colorado and Kansas, are prime territory for landspouts. They often appear along the dry line, where moist air from the Gulf collides with dry desert air. In fact, storm chasers flock to these regions in the spring and summer because landspouts can appear suddenly, without the towering supercells that usually tip you off to a tornado. In 2019, Colorado experienced a spectacular outbreak where multiple landspouts formed in a single afternoon, spiraling across open fields in full view of stunned residents. What makes landspouts dangerous isn't just their strength, but their speed and surprise. They can drop to the ground in seconds, leaving almost no time for warnings. Unlike supercell tornadoes, which meteorologists can often detect with Doppler radar, landspouts are much harder to track. If you see one forming, it's often already too late to prepare. So while landspouts may not match the raw power of their supercell cousins, they prove one thing. Not every tornado needs a monster storm to exist. Sometimes, all it takes is the right twist of air at the right moment, and a funnel is on the ground before you even notice. And as frightening as that is, at least landspouts act alone. Because some tornadoes don't just spin, they bring companions, orbiting like predators circling their prey. And that's when things turn truly sinister. Level 4. If landspouts are solitary performers, satellite tornadoes are the terrifying reminder that sometimes one funnel isn't enough. These are the companions, smaller tornadoes that orbit around a much larger parent tornado, like moons circling a planet. And while they might look secondary, don't underestimate them. 
A satellite tornado can be every bit as destructive as the main funnel, and sometimes even more dangerous. Here's how they form. Inside a massive supercell thunderstorm, the main mesocyclone is already spinning like a colossal engine, but nearby, smaller pockets of rotation can tighten into their own funnels. Instead of merging with the primary tornado, they drop separately, circling it at frightening speeds. To the eye, it looks like one enormous tornado surrounded by smaller, menacing companions, a sight storm chasers describe as both awe-inspiring and horrifying. The real danger comes from unpredictability. People in the direct path of the main tornado know they're in trouble. Sirens are blaring, alerts are issued, everyone's paying attention. But the satellite tornado doesn't always follow the same track. It can strike areas just outside the primary damage path, places where people think they're safe. Survivors often say the smaller funnels felt like ambushes, coming from angles no one expected. One infamous example is the Hallam, Nebraska tornado of 2004. That storm produced a massive EF4 tornado over a mile wide, devastating entire neighborhoods, but it didn't travel alone. Alongside it, satellite tornadoes touched down, extending the destruction far beyond the central track. Some residents thought they had escaped the worst of it, only to watch a secondary funnel tear through moments later. And this isn't rare. Storm chasers in Oklahoma and Kansas have filmed satellites dancing around parent tornadoes like smaller predators circling a giant beast. In the May 2013 outbreak, when several violent tornadoes tore through central Oklahoma, chasers reported multiple satellite funnels forming around the main circulation, creating an environment where destruction seemed to come from every direction at once. The psychological impact of satellite tornadoes is brutal. A single tornado is already overwhelming, but when the sky spawns companions, it feels like the atmosphere has stacked the odds against survival. Imagine watching one funnel in the distance, then realizing another is circling in closer. The terror is unlike anything else. Satellite tornadoes teach us a harsh truth. Storms don't always fight fair. They multiply, divide, and expand their reach in ways that defy expectation. And if satellites seem like chaos circling on the outside, just wait until you see what happens inside the largest funnels themselves. Because some tornadoes don't just spin, they split within, hiding multiple killers inside one monstrous vortex. Level 5. As if one tornado weren't enough, some of the most destructive funnels hide an even darker secret inside. Multiple vortices. These are tornadoes within tornadoes. Violent sub-vortices that spin inside the main funnel, each one capable of carving its own path of devastation. From a distance, a multiple vortex tornado looks like a single swirling monster. But up close, storm chasers and radar reveal its true nature, smaller funnels, whipping around the inside, tearing across the landscape like rotating blades. Each sub-vortex can be hundreds of feet wide, with wind speeds rivaling the strongest tornadoes on record. That's why damage from these storms often looks so bizarre. One house may be completely obliterated, while the one next door is left standing with little more than broken windows. To survivors, it feels like the tornado played favorites. In reality, it's the chaos of sub-vortices carving uneven paths of destruction. One of the most infamous examples is the El Reno tornado of 2013 in Oklahoma. At 2.6 miles wide, it remains the largest tornado ever recorded. But what made it especially terrifying were the multiple vortices spinning inside. Chasers reported funnels within the main tornado flashing in and out of view, each one unleashing winds estimated at over 300 miles per hour. Even seasoned scientists were caught off guard. The storm shifted direction suddenly, claiming the lives of respected storm researchers who had dedicated their careers to studying tornadoes. It was a sobering reminder that no matter how advanced our technology becomes, nature still has the upper hand. Another chilling example came during the 1974 super outbreak, when the tornado that struck Xenia, Ohio, was revealed to have been a multiple vortex beast. Entire neighborhoods were shredded while others right beside them remained intact. Survivors described the destruction as almost surgical whole streets gone. While the next block looked relatively untouched, multiple vortex tornadoes are notoriously hard to detect in real time. Radar can show the broad circulation, but spotting every sub-vortex inside is nearly impossible. For anyone caught in the path, survival can come down to chance whether a sub-vortex passed directly over your home or missed by a matter of yards. The sheer brutality of these storms makes them some of the most feared tornadoes in history. They don't just destroy in one continuous swath, they shred in fragments, leaving behind a landscape that looks like it was a attacked by a dozen different storms at once. And as terrifying as they are, they still aren't the peak of tornado evolution. Because when the atmosphere unleashes its most powerful weapon, the long-lived, city-destroying giants born from supercells, we see the true apex of nature's fury. Level 6. 
all the tornado types we've covered so far, dust devils, ghost nidos, water spouts, even multiple vortex monsters are just pieces of the puzzle. But nothing compares to the supercell tornado. This is the apex predator of storms, the kind that dominates headlines, rewrites history, and leaves scars across the land for generations. A supercell is the most dangerous kind of thunderstorm on Earth. Unlike ordinary storms, it has a mesocyclone, a rotating updraft that acts like the engine of a machine. This rotation can extend for miles into the atmosphere, fueling the storm with explosive energy. And when conditions line up perfectly, that mesocyclone tightens and drops a tornado that doesn't just touch down and vanish. It endures, sometimes for hours, carving paths so long you can trace them from satellites in space. At their peak, supercell tornadoes climb to the top of the enhanced Fujita scale. EF4s and EF5s aren't about damage, they're about obliteration. Homes are erased, asphalt is peeled off highways, cars, trucks, and even trains are thrown like toys. Massive steel beams, built to last for decades, are twisted into mangled wreckage. When survivors describe these tornadoes, the word bomb comes up often because that's exactly what the aftermath looks like. History has no shortage of examples. The Tri-State Tornado of 1925 remains the deadliest in U.S. history. It cut across Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana for 219 miles, killing nearly 700 people and leveling entire towns in minutes. Almost a century later, it still stands as the longest continuous tornado path ever recorded. Then came the Joplin, Missouri Tornado in 2011, a catastrophic EF5 that struck a densely populated city. Schools, homes, and hospitals were flattened. Over 100 50 lives were lost. In a matter of hours, a thriving community was reduced to rubble. What makes supercell tornadoes even more terrifying is their unpredictability. Meteorologists can track the parent storm, but the exact moment and place where a tornado will form or intensify is often uncertain until it's already happening. They can suddenly spawn satellite funnels, split into multiple vortices, or shift course without warning. Even with modern radar and storm chasers on the ground, survival often comes down to seconds of decision making. Supercell tornadoes are nature's ultimate reminder of how small we really are. They combine scale, longevity, and sheer violence in a way no other weather phenomenon can match. And here's the chilling truth. In the world of tornadoes, size and strength aren't the only things to fear. It's their unpredictability, the fact that no matter how advanced our science becomes, the atmosphere will always hold the power to surprise us. So the next time you hear the word tornado, remember it could mean anything from a playful dust devil to a supercell giant capable of erasing entire towns. The question is which one would you rather face?